When one is moving at relativistic speeds, straight lines become hyperbolas and planes become hyperboloids. Why is that? I mean, Lorentz contraction is linear, so linear shapes under linear transformations should look linear too. The goal of this and the follow-up video is to understand how this curving comes about. This first video is gonna be a little bit simpler. Here we just focus on understanding why stationary things do not appear where they are when you're moving. We start by noticing something simple, maybe even obvious. When you look at moving things, you do not perceive them where they actually are at the moment. You see a delayed image, an old image of that object. Here, for example, the blue rocket sends out its position as a light signal to the purple one. By the time the signal is received by the purple rocket, the blue rocket has moved some distance away. And therefore the purple rocket will see a delayed image of the blue one. I sometimes add this grid with respect to which the blue rocket is stationary. It's just there to challenge our perception of relative motion. However, let us also observe the situation from the point of view of the blue rocket. From its point of view, it is the purple rocket that is doing the moving. Had you not just seen the situation from the point of view of the purple rocket, would you automatically think it must see the blue rocket someplace else? The blue one has been sitting still all the time. Why would anyone see it anywhere else? So, which one is true? Does the purple see the blue one where it is, or does it see it somewhere else? It can't be both. Well, it indeed turns out to be the case that the purple rocket sees a dislocated image of the blue rocket. And uh, if you trust the viewpoint of the purple rocket, and you trust the principle of relativity which says that only the relative motion matters, then of course this had to be so. But perhaps it's not entirely obvious. Consider for example charges and their electric fields. Charges feel the direction of the field lines of another charge. And the field lines of a non-accelerating charge always point to the real-time position of the charge. Therefore, another charge would not feel a delayed charge location. This means that if the rockets were charged, the purple rocket would see the blue rocket in the delayed position, but feel its charge in the present time position. Okay, but light is not a field line. It's more like a wave or a ripple in the field lines. The wave front determines the direction of light. In a frame where the blue rocket is stationary, the blue rocket will sit at the center of the signal ring. Therefore, one might be led to believe that the purple rocket must see the blue one at the center of the ring in its actual real position. This is not the case as I revealed earlier. And to finally understand why, we need to take a closer look at how the world looks like from the point of view of the purple rocket. We start by studying space-time. These clocks are synchronized in the rest frame of this plane. When we change our inertial frames, that is, we accelerate, important relativistic effects take place. Most importantly for this demonstration, the clocks become unsynchronized. The clocks in front of us are ahead in time and the clocks behind us are behind in time. This will have an effect on the direction of a wavefront. The parts of the wave which are further away from us will have had more time to move towards the right. This will cause the wavefront as a whole to seem kind of turned or tilted. Classically, of course, there should be no such turning of the waves. 
but if you do the calculations with correct Lorentz contractions and time dilations, you end up with the exact same angle one would get just by adding velocities classically. And that is the angle which points towards the delayed position of the blue rocket. It's fun that the classical and relativistic treatments result in the same angle, although for somewhat different reasons. And finally, this is what the purple rocket would really see when you take into account all the delay effects. So you see that it has no observation of the wave before it hits it. That's of course because the wave moves at the speed of light. This video's goal was to secure an understanding of why moving things do not appear where they are. It's kind of obvious, but as you saw in this video, there were more to the details as one might have expected. And I think it's at least a little bit counterintuitive that we don't see still objects where they are if we are moving ourselves. Of course relativity says it doesn't matter who's doing the moving, but you know what I mean. In the second part of this series, we will see how the hyperbolic forms come to play using Lorentz transformations in 2 plus 1 space-time. So until then, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.